Hi and welcome back to A Case of Books. It has been a while. Obviously I've been doing a few author interviews during lockdown but it has been a good while since I've made an old school from above book video. I thought what better to kind of get back into it than to do a bookshelf tour. I love watching other people's and in the past people have asked me to do this. So uh, here we go. Now I have a lot of books um, and so I thought that if you can stomach it I would go A to Z and uh, a few other things in between. So I'm gonna talk through the books I have that are uh, written by authors whose surname begins with A. I organise all my fiction alphabetically by author's surname. But before we get into it I just thought I'd do a really quick overview of how I organise my books. I live in a pretty small flat in London so I don't have sort of one beautiful shot of a big bookcase. I have bookcases tucked into every corner of my flat that I can fit them in. Um, and as you'll be able to see, half of them are used as shelves as well. There's my contact lenses, for example. Um, so there are shelves in the bedroom, there are shelves in the study, there are shelves in the lounge. As I said, I um, have all my fiction, children's and adult mixed in together, uh, organized alphabetically. Uh, the librarian in me uh, couldn't do it any other way. And then I have a shelf for uh, my own books and you can see some of my foreign editions there so let me know if you would be interested in seeing those in more detail too. Uh, and I have a shelf for non-fiction which also has poetry plays and graphic novels on it. Um, and I have work shelves in my study which are kind of my TBR, copies I've been sent for review, research books, all that sorts of thing. Um, and then finally I have a shelf in the lounge which is kind of pretty books I guess. It's right next to the sofa and it's a mix of coffee table books and pretty books and just things that might be interesting to kind of browse if you're sat on the sofa when people are visiting. So that's how I arrange my books and um, if there's the appetite I can go through all of them but let's start at A as is the sensible place to begin. So my very first book, alphabetically speaking, is Stay With Me by Ayabami Adebayo, which I read uh, because it was on the Women's Prize shortlist a couple of years ago. Uh, this is a absolutely brilliant, heartbreaking book about uh, marriage kind of unravelling, but it's got lots of twists, it's quite plotty as well, and I loved the writing. Highly recommend it. Most of the books in our flat are mine, but some of my boyfriends are in there as well. And this is his Call Me By Your Name, obviously a very famous book. I actually haven't read it, uh, but he thought that it was brilliant, so I must get to it. Next are two books by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie, neither of which I have read for no good reason at all. And I have been meaning to read both of them for literally years. Um, so these are the beautiful, relatively new covers that match Americana and Half of a Yellow Sun and honestly I have no excuse or reason for why I haven't read them uh, and they're high up my priority list. Next is another book I haven't read uh, called Speedboat by Renata Adler. I am super interested in kind of metafiction and experimental fiction uh, and this is kind of one of those books that's on lists of kind of metafiction, experimental fiction that you must read. So um, I bought this relatively recently, I also think it's a particularly lovely cover. Um, and I am hoping to get to it relatively soon. I'm usually quite strict. I don't keep loads of books that I don't think I'll read and I'm a fairly unsentimental colour. Um, but obviously you do amass all those books that you have the best of intentions to read. Now this one I have read, this is The Wolves of Willoughby Chase by Joan Aiken and this is one of my all time favourite children's books and I particularly love this cover, um, which is a relatively recent one. I don't know what's happened to my childhood, childhood copy. Um, yeah, as I said, this is one of my absolute favourite kind of classic children's books um, and I reread it about five years ago, I think, and it's, it absolutely held up magnificently. Another classic next, uh, although not one I have such a fond relationship with, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Um, I, I kind of like this book fine. Um, I didn't read it at a very formative age. I came to it as an adult um, and I think it's a, I, I, I got plenty from it and I enjoyed reading it um, but it, it doesn't have that place in my heart that I know it does for other people although I absolutely adored Greta Gerwig's film version of it. Next we have The Power by Naomi Alderman which is one of my books of the year, the year it came out a couple of years ago um, and it also won the Women's Prize that year. I really love this book, I think it is clever and shocking and just brilliantly done. Um, I actually made a video talking all about it with my friends Rosalind Yana uh, which I will link below if you're interested in hearing my thoughts in a bit more detail. 
Uh, next up, another book that I haven't read, uh, Crossover by Kwame Alexander. I have this because I bought the last 10 years of the Newbury Prize winners, which is the big children's books prize in the US, and I have intentions of reading all 10 of them. Next up, I've got a few books by David Armand, who is a favourite children's author. He writes such weird, kind of lovely children's books, and I really enjoy his writing. I particularly enjoyed The True Tale of the Monster Village, and although, and I'm, mm, I must admit, I'm not quite sure why I've kept the boys on with Piranhas, because I'm pretty picky about the books that I keep. I think it's just so beautiful. I did like it, um, but I generally only keep books that I love. Uh, My Name is Mina, I really did love. This is the prequel to Skellig, and Skellig, I think, is good but I adored My Name is Mina. It is so creative and clever and wonderful. And when I was a school librarian, I used to uh, read this a lot with my students. I just think it's, I think it's a really magical book and I'd really recommend it uh, whether or not you have read Skellig. Next up is a collection of fairy tales, a very famous one, Hans Anderson's Fairy Tales. Um, I reread this collection relatively recently uh, because if you will excuse me the gentlest of promotion of my own books, uh, the second book in the Pages and Co series, Tilly and the Lost Fairy Tales, as the t- title gives away, is all about fairy tales and I really enjoyed revisiting fairy tales. Um, I reread lots of collections, famous ones and less famous ones, to kind of decide which ones to use. Um, so I have quite a lot of books of fairy tales and quite a lot of non-fiction about fairy tales as well, which if I do as many videos as to get to the non-fiction shelf, we can talk about that more. Uh, this is a book I haven't read, uh, Willful Disregard by Lena Anderson. I kept this because an editor friend uh, really recommended it strongly and she acquires really good books. So I just keep meaning to get to it because I trust her taste um, and it's really short as well. Um, then next is another book I haven't read. Um, the Word for Woman is Wilderness by Abby Andrews. Okay, full disclosure, I read the beginning of this and it didn't really click with me immediately, but look at the cover. I just love the cover and I love the title. So I have kept that one primarily for aesthetic reasons, I must admit. Next up is another of the Newbury books, The One and Only Ivan. I've actually started reading this um, and I'm really enjoying it. And the sequel to it, or the like companion book to it, just came out recently, um, but I don't have that one. Uh, so that's another of my Newbury reads. Next up is a series where uh, the third book is actually with my mum at the moment. Uh, she also loves this, se- this series and I have lent her all of them after I finished them, uh, but due to due to the virus I haven't seen her for months and months um so this is book one and book two in the winter night series by Catherine Arden this is magical fantasy um inspired by Russian fairy tales there's a quote that I gave it uh, a couple of years ago now and actually if you have been watching this channel um for a while you'll you'll know that I've spoken about um these books before I really think that they're excellent. I love the writing, I love the um, kind of proto-feminism, I love the fairy tales, I love the kind of snow. I just, I think they're really excellent. And if you like fantasy, I really can't recommend them highly enough. This is a collection of short stories I read last year, How to Love a Jamaican by Alexia Arthurs. Obviously short stories, um, you kind of tend to respond to some more than us and I've seen that I've drawn dots against stories there and do you know what thinking back I can't remember if those are ones I particularly loved or that I didn't like um but one way or the other I think it's more likely I would have marked out ones I loved so (laughs) maybe have a look at those ones if you have a copy of the book this next book is another book that I was recommended uh when I can't even remember who by apologies if you're listening to this but I was recommended this um as another sort of experimental kind of strange book epitaph of a small winner um it's obviously got a really good cover um and I really don't know much about it I'm afraid uh but I uh I have high hopes for it Next, we have quite a few books by Kate Atkinson, who is one of my favourite writers, and Life After Life is one of my favourite books. Now, I hate this cover, um, but I have kept this one because it is signed to me. Um, I hate is a strong word. I don't like the cover, and I don't think it well represents the book. Now, this is one of my most precious kind of bookish possessions. It is a limited edition signed proof of the companion book to Life After Life, A God in Ruins, uh, which I love almost as much as Life After Life and 
not many books have made me cry like the end of this book did I just think it's I just think it's wonderful um, so that's a very precious copy um, and then I also have a few other Kate Atkinson books another really lovely proof of transcription which I haven't read yet um, but I do have um, a separate copy to read because this is such a beautiful proof that I don't want to read it and uh, mess it up and then I have a completely normal paperback of her first book, Behind the Scenes at the Museum, which I thought was excellent as well. Um, although Life After Life and A God in Ruins are definitely my favourite of her books. Um, so I have a nice little collection of Kate Atkinson books, some of which are very, very precious to me. I, of course, have a copy of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I am particularly fond of this cover. Uh, and then my other Atwood books are The Blind Assassin, which I just read at the beginning of this year, uh, and Hagseed. Now, I am coming to terms with the fact that whilst I always get something from an Atwood book, I don't think her writing style is perhaps my exact cup of tea. I was expecting to love The Blind Assassin. Um, again, it's a sort of story within a story, kind of structurally interesting, and it just didn't quite do it for me. Um, uh, Hagseed is probably my favourite of her books, which is all about kind of theatre. It's one of the Shakespeare retellings. It's The Tempest, which is my favourite Shakespeare play. And then finally, of course, I have a full collection of Jane Austen books. Well, a full collection of her full published novels, um, most of which I bought while I was a student, so are in varying, not especially aesthetically pleasing and cheap, uh, particularly these ones, cheap paperbacks. I do have one aesthetically pleasing Austin, and that is this lovely edition of Sense and Sensibility, uh, which isn't even my favourite book, but it's um, it's a lovely edition and it looks nice on my shelf, um, even next to all my tatty old cheap paperbacks of the rest of them. I've read all of these apart from Mansfield Park, uh, and my favourite is Persuasion, although I have um, an entirely expected probably fondness for Pride and Prejudice, um, as I think is to be expected probably if you know anything about me but I really do I really do think it's excellent um, I am very fond of course of the BBC six part uh, TV adaption as is my mom so those are all of my Austin books I feel like I need to invest maybe in some uh, kind of beautiful editions of some of these certainly maybe of um, Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion which are my my two favorites uh, yeah you can see that on Persuasion it's got an ink spot I read it when I was at university and not very careful with my books so that is my A collection. Um, I hope that this has been interesting. I would love to know if you have read any of them and what you make of them, especially if there's any that I haven't read that you think I should prioritise. If you did find this interesting, uh, then I will move on to B. B, there are even more books beginning with B. Uh, so let me know what you think. You can find me at A Case for Books uh, anywhere on the internet, really. I uh, use Twitter and Instagram most actively. Um, and since I last made a proper video, I've actually had two books published, which I haven't really talked about on here at all. Uh, but I write the Pages and Co series, and I suppose let me know as well if you'd like more videos about the kind of authoring side of things. There are their lovely shiny paperbacks, and book three is out in hardback in September in the UK and the US. Um, last thing to just say is that if you have noticed and enjoyed the music in the background of this video, it's written for me uh, by my boyfriend. Uh, and his band is just about to release their second single. They are called Kin, K-I-N, uh, and they're on Spotify if you want to have a look. Um, thank you for watching. Um, please do subscribe, uh, and I will hopefully see you soon.